Hello, folks. The purpose of this particular live stream is I just wanted to throw around a couple of, couple of ideas about my next seminar that I'm going to put on. As you may or may not know, I did a seminar last year in August, and it was a basic introduction to correct sentence structure communication, parsing syntax grammar, how to translate, basically how to translate a fiction babble sentence into correct sentence structure and the practicality of that. Now, I did say I was going to do probably another seminar on parse and then another seminar on syntax. Uh, but I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about that now just because, I mean, everything that I would teach in those seminars would be available on my YouTube channel in the parse playlist. But I do cognize the value of approaching it from a different angle. So I think what I might do is instead of having those be two separate workshops, I'm sorry, seminars, I would just combine them into one. Because basically, between you and me, parse is the cornerstone of the grammar technology. It definitely is the cornerstone and it is probably the piece that most people miss. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, when I first started studying correct sentence structure back in 2017, and I signed up for classes from an individual known as colon mark hyphen lowercase k Kishon colon Christopher, because he claimed to teach quantum grammar, which I later found out he didn't because he didn't know it. Uh, but his strong point was the parse. So you could say that basically Mark's strong point, he knows how to parse words. However, he, doesn't, he does not teach any clear, concise, consistent manner of coming to conclusions as to what the earliest nativity root meaning of a word is and what to do with it. So I've done that on my YouTube channel over the last few years with help from my tutor, Colin Raven. We've developed a pretty efficient, consistent system that anyone can use so that your syntaxing is the same as my syntaxing. And it'll be consistent across the board, no questions. So parse is the most important thing in all of this grammar as far as the grammar mechanics themselves. If you want to know how to syntax through process of elimination with no guessing, you have to know how to parse and you have to put the work in. And this is what eludes most people. With my six years of teaching experience, this is the thing that folks find the most challenging is actually putting in the time and effort to parse things without fail. The majority of folks that I do consultations with and do workshops with, their weak point is the parse. Why? Because it takes time and energy, folks. It takes a lot of time and energy. Like, you have to do it. If you don't do it, you're constantly going to be guessing, well, uh, is this word tangible or is this word non-tangible? Well, I think it might be this. Well, I feel like it might be that. Now, that doesn't work. You got to know. You got to know what it is. And the only way you can know is by looking it up over and over and over again. Every single particle, every single word over and over and over again in an etymology dictionary. And then you remember it. Over time, the more you do it, you will remember it. Repetition is the mother of technique, as my boxing coach used to say. So the more you do it, the more you remember it. Because when you walk into those foreign vessels in dry dock, when you're in those situations under duress, you're not going to be able to carry around an etymology dictionary and say, hold on, wait a minute, let me look this up. No, you got to have it here. And if you don't, well, things probably aren't going to turn out the way you think they will. So that's my idea for the next seminar, to combine the elements of parse and syntax. First, to explain why parse is so important. Second, to show how to do it 
which again, there are multiple videos on my, I mean, literally dozens of videos on my channel that show how to parse safe words. And then ultimately how to parlay that into syntaxing through process of elimination. If this word is tangible contract, it's not going to be an adverb. If that word is non-tangible contract, it's not going to be an adverb. If it comes at the end of a sentence, it's not going to be an adjective. It's not going to be an adverb, so on and so forth. All these different little things that you learn through repetition and also through taking workshops. Um, those of you who take workshops know what I mean. It's a very focused workshop, confidential workshops. It's just like going into a classroom. Only you're the only student. I'm the teacher. And I'm focusing everything on you so that you get the closure that you're motivated to receive. Uh, I mean, if you're scattered and your life is chaotic and you're under stress and stuff like that, you're going to have a very hard time learning this uh, from my experience. But other than that, you know, the, the workshops are the most efficient place that I know of to learn this. I don't know anyone out there, anyone in my over six years of being in this domain, I don't know anyone out there who has learned the grammar by themselves without a tutor. You must have a one-on-one -on -one tutor. If anybody out there can prove me wrong, feel free to email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Step up onto the geometric level playing field of contract and take the Pepsi challenge. Other than that, you need a tutor. This is not haphazard stuff. This is not guessing. This is not throwing something against the wall to see if it sticks. If you throw this, if you have closure on the grammar and you throw this against the wall, it's going to totally annihilate the wall and everything with it. That's how powerful it is. All right. You're not just splattering crap on a wall to see what sticks. That might work for other people. Oh, I almost named some names, but I won't. Uh, so that's my idea for the next seminar coming up, which will probably be in August again, uh, a year later, probably. Because quite frankly, I've been busy, a lot of stuff going on in personal life and things like that. But I actually have been mostly busy doing private confidential workshops with private and confidential students and clients and things like that, which is a good thing. Although I do try and get on YouTube and do live streams and stuff every now and then, but it's don't really have the now space to actually create uh, grammar videos and edit them and things like that. However, there's about 900 or so videos on here already for you to study. So that's not a big deal. Everything's here for you if you want it. So if you, the viewer, have any suggestions about what you might like to have included in the next seminar, Feel free to pop them in the chat. So what's the news like out there in the world? Is anybody out there watching this right now active in the what we would call quantum grammar community? By the way, folks, I actually coined the term quantum grammar community back in, I think it was 2019. 2019 or 2020. And I did a video on it. So there's continuance of the evidence for that. Shortly after I came out into the public with the term quantum grammar community, the something known as the Red Thumb Club revenued themselves as the quantum community. Isn't that interesting? What a what a coincidence. What a coincidence. So I try to be a little bit careful about what I share on here in the public. Because I know that there are parasites out there that just leech off of the words that come out of my mouth and uh, basically plagiarize my grammar and my ideas. Which I can't stop anybody from doing that. And I'm not going to, uh, how can you say this, go after anyone that does that. That's on them. They will reap the karmic um, results of that, conclusions of that themselves. 
Taco, the cardigan corgi. Is there a canine in my chat? That's a first. Well, I knew that canines were very intelligent, but this, this puts the frosting on the cake, bro. <laughs> also, what I mean by active is I mean using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar in the public, meaning you have a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the live life with correct grammar on it, correct witnessing mechanics, which... Fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, folks, however you want to look at it, I'm not passing judgment. There is an entity out there that claims to possess copyright, copy claim ownership of the 1 by 1.9 flag and also claims to be the only individual that can give you a claim of the live life. And they completely modified the mechanics of the claim of the live life. In that, as far as witnessing mechanics go, they sell their claims of the live life with only them as a witness. And they don't even witness anyone. They just ask people to send in the money and send in fiction IDs like social security card passport, driving license, things like that. And then it's like a conveyor belt. They just go through, put their name on it, thumbprint it, and send it back to you. And that's how it works. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is not a correct claim of the live life. A correct claim of the live life must have three live life claim witnesses on it. And those folks have to witness you, meaning at the very least, you must have a video communication with them so that you can see one another, hear one another, witness one another. At the very least, at the best you can meet in person, that would be great. And then you can witness it. But most people don't have that uh, option available to them. So you can do a video communication and do the witnessing that way. But the individual I'm talking about or the group of individuals that sell these basically fraudulent live life claims, they charge like upwards of 200 bucks or close to 200 bucks for a claim of the live life. Those witnessing mechanics are wrong, 100% wrong, okay? But again, you, you have the choice to do whatever you want to do. If, that, if you want to participate with that, that's fine. I'm not going to tell anybody what to do. But as far as creating your own correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim of the live life, you'd have to have correct grammar on it, which the individual I'm talking about, there is no correct grammar on that claim of the live life. And I have done an audit of that claim of the live life in my Coral Blade Grotto broadcast section, I think, or in the audit section playlist on this channel. I go through it and I show you exactly what is wrong with it and also how to fix it so that you can create your own correct sentence structure claim of the live life. But yeah, it only had one witness and myself. Yeah, I mean, in, in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and the one by 1.9 grammar flag, you must have three witnesses. If you want to be autonomous, if you want to be your own authority. But Taco, the cardigan corgi, I will bet you dollars to donuts that you don't have closure on the grammar. I will bet you dollars to donuts that you just bought a piece of paper and went through a couple things, you know, probably took it down to the post office, created some sort of C lane or something like that, or post road or whatever you, whatever you did, whatever they told you to do. I don't know what they told you to do. Um, you know, best of luck with that. For those of you out there who want to create your own claim to live life, because Taco the Cardigan Corgi 
if you want to be the authority of your live life claim, then you would have to be the author of it. Notice that the word authority has the word author in it. So that means you would have to be the author of the document in order for you to be the authority of it or have authority of it. Also, I don't know what it says, but I'm guessing at the bottom of your of that particular document that you're talking about, there is a copyright copy claim section in small print, probably eight point font. And it will say copyright copy claim. I will bet you that there's someone else's name down there instead of yours or in addition to yours. So your name and this other individual's name might appear at the bottom or it just might be their name. And what that says is that either you share ownership of your live life claim with someone else or someone else owns your live life claim. Basic postal and grammar mechanics, banking mechanics right there, actually banking mechanics right there. So if you want to be autonomous, if you want to be the authority of your construct and your documents, then you would necessarily have to learn this grammar first. First and foremost, that's the most important thing to get closure on this grammar. And it doesn't take 200 hours. I can guarantee you that after 200 hours, you most likely will not have closure on this. I mean, me, I've been teaching for six years. It took me 2,000 hours before I could even think about using this. And even then, I still didn't have closure on it. However, if you're willing to invest the now space and the energy in it, it's well worth it. And if you get closure on the grammar, and I can certify that you have closure on the grammar, in other words, you can prove it to me that you have closure on this grammar and can use it, bam, like that, I would be more than happy, or more than happy to help you create a claim of the live life. Matter of fact, I would donate that to you as a gift because I think that everyone should have the opportunity to have a claim of the live life, a correct one. And I totally disagree with anyone charging money for a live life claim. If you do your research, you do your studying, you look into your history, you will know that prior to Colin David Eiffel Wayne Colin Miller passing away, the mere thought of charging money for a live life claim wasn't even a thought. No one ever mentioned it. Colin David Eiffel Wayne Colin Miller certainly never mentioned it. He put a template in his... Uh, quantum grammar book for people to use, right? But then after he passed away, um, some nefarious, by my perception and my viewpoint, some nefarious entities came in, more than one, and tried to hijack it, the technology, the, concept, the construct, the concepts, and began making it a money-making uh, endeavor. And they also tried to hide it as well. So you hear people going around talking about, oh, you got to bring forth blah, 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 and the system's trying to hide the grammar. No, that's not true. Not true at all. The only individuals that literally tried to hide anything about the grammar were people actually involved in the grammar who had titles such as commander-in-chief and postmaster general and whatever else they claimed. Uh, Chief Federal Postal Judge. Folks like that tried to come in and uh, classify everything and hide it from the public because they put up a paywall. They wanted to probably make money off of it, is my guess. Anyways, all that aside, don't lose hope because you can, if you so choose, take it upon yourself to learn the grammar and create your own claim of the live life, create your own biosphere, be autonomous, and not have to rely on anyone else. That makes sense. I do feel weird about completing the form without buying. I think they mean being familiar with what's on the document. 
The thing is with that is that you, for example, I created live life claims for my children, but of course they're not old enough to be postmasters. So I am the postmaster judge, bank banker of their live life claims. I autographed over the stamps. They also, they autographed on the document and there are three witnesses on the document, actually four witnesses because they're not old enough to be a witness. There are different mechanics that go into it when, you know, a child is uh, involved. But the point I'm trying to make is I have authority over those documents. So therefore, if those documents would ever be used, I would have to take jurisdiction over them. I would be the one in command there. So it's the same thing with you, Taco the Cardigan Corgi. You don't want to be barking up the wrong tree. You don't know the grammar. So how do you ever, I mean, just, just asking a question just off the top of my head out of curiosity, what did you think, I mean, what, what was the benefit of, get, of purchasing this document that you purchased? Like, what did you think the benefit would be? Like, what did you think you were going to use it for? If, number one, you don't know the grammar. Don't know the first thing about the grammar. Number two, you don't know what's on the contract or the document that you agreed to or whatever it is. And three, you weren't the author of the document. Like, what, what is it? What did you think was going to happen? Just curious. Like, what was your volition behind buying that? What, what, did, what did you think was going to happen? Just curious. I mean, I've been out of the that, that type of fiction loop for so long. I genuinely would like to know. I don't. I don't know why someone would do that. So I'm just asking a genuine question because I, I genuinely don't know the answer. I can take guesses. I know that some people like to, I guess, sort of create an imaginary package of quantum grammar and make it seem like it's some sort of magic silver bullet that if you purchase this document or this package from this particular group, then all of a sudden you have special powers that other people don't and it will get you out of trouble or something, which most folks find out if they actually try and use it, that that's not true. That's not true at all. And then they're left hanging high and dry, no one there to help them, and they have no idea. They've suddenly dove into the deep end and they can't swim. I've seen it happen multiple times. So that's my question. You know, what, what did you think? Uh, what, what was your volition? Why, why did you buy that? What was the point? I thought it would give me freedom to live how I thought was right. Specifically didn't want the shot to keep working but it never got that far at work. I thought it would give me freedom to live how I thought was right. So you thought that paying for a document that you had no idea what it said would give you that. That's interesting. See, for me, contract is well everything is contract folks everything is contract most folks brought up in the public school system it's ingrained in us to participate with presumption assumption one example would be religion you're brought up to believe in something that you cannot prove the entity in the sky that's all powerful and blah 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 and sees everything can't prove it, can't prove it's there, but it's there. One example, get someone to believe in something they can't prove, you'll get them to believe in anything. It's sort of like that. So it's been ingrained to basically what, what I call authoritarianism. If you're familiar with that, you can look it up on Google, authoritarianism and authoritarian followers. 
is basically a programming technique where people that you perceive to have an authority that you've been brought up to believe have an authority like government or whatever, they can tell you what to do and it's okay. You can trust them because they have your best interests in heart because they're the authority. But really, no one has authority over you. No one. The only authority that anyone has over you is the authority that you allow them to have. Taco, the cardigan corgi. Thank you very much for that donation. Much gratitude. I really appreciate that. Arf, arf, rough, rough. So if Taco the Carnegie and Corgi would contact me and want to apply for a workshop, they would email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and they would include their full correct name, which I'm guessing, it's just a guess, I'm guessing it wouldn't be Taco the Cardigan Corgi. I'm guessing it would be a different name. But if you want to contract with me, you have to use your correct name, your full correct name, not just your first name, your full correct name. All right. So you common law folks out there kind of have to get over the uh, the hurdle of, oh, it's a slave name. Ooh. No. None of that shit applies in the domain of fact. If someone has gotten you to think or believe that your last name, your surname is a slave name, well then bully for them. The name that you put on your correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, claim the live life is your name. If, if it's, if you created the document, if you're the author of the live life claim, if someone else offered the uh, authored the live life claim, and if, there's no correct grammar mechanics or, or no correct witnessing mechanics or anything like that, then someone else owns your name, not you. But that's easy to fix. Easy to fix. You just got to take the time to learn the grammar. That's all. All right. I'm going to step away for a brief moment and come back. And if there are no further questions, I will draw this to a close. Appreciate everybody joining and also appreciate again, talk with the cardigan Corgi. I really appreciate you taking the time to donate that to me. That tells me that a, you might be serious about learning this stuff and B you value what it is that I do. And I have much gratitude for that. Thank you. Not sure what to ask. Just appreciate your dedication to teach something. You don't have to. Well, thank you. You know, taco, that's the thing with most, most folks that come on here, they just don't know what to ask because they don't know anything about the grammar. And if you really think about it, like really sit down and think about it, you spent what you spent on that document, right? The live life claim, quote unquote, live life claim document, but you have no idea how to use it. To me, that would be like someone buying an automatic rifle and having no clue how to use it, load it, assemble it, or anything like that. But you see cool videos of people, you know, bah, 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 you know, you see, you know, oh, I want that. That's going to protect me. But you don't know how to use it. So I don't look at anything as a waste of time. Everything to me is a learning experience, an opportunity. So if I were in your shoes, I would probably take that opportunity to assess the situation. Like, well, this is something that I want. I would like to know how to do this. So I'm gonna take the steps to do this. I'm gonna start looking at this channel and these 900 videos. I'm going to go through the playlists. I'm going to start with the mini class playlist and look over the videos in there, which give a good, you know, synopsis of 
the overall mechanics of correct sentence structure. And then from there, I'll go into the more in-depth playlist, like the parse playlist, the syntax playlist, the correct sentence structure playlist. And I'll look at those playlists. And then I'll go into the quanti- uh, the psychology playlist, the psyche playlist, and go into that a little bit and just start, you know, dipping the toes in, getting the feet wet. And if you feel passionate about it, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com is the email. Hit me up, apply for a workshop. What will happen is when you email me and if you include your full correct name, I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation where we can look at each other eye to eye. You can ask me whatever you want to ask me. I'll do the same. And it costs you nothing. The consultations, there are no charges or fees for the consultations. Just so that's clear. Now, people have sent me donations and gifts for the consultations because usually what ends up happening in the comp- during the consultations is I end up doing a little demonstration of what my teaching methods are. Like I'll show how to syntax a sentence or create a correct sentence structure. Just give a little you know, demonstration of parse or something like that. So people will actually send donation gifts. Even though I don't ask them to, they will. Say, hey, you know, thank you for your time. Here's a donation for you. I appreciate that because it helps keep a roof over my head and food on the table. No doubt about it. Navigating on a donation gift basis is not the easiest thing in the world. So there you go. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate your donation. And I appreciate your participation in this chat. And whoever voted that you're going to start learning this today, kudos to you. I very much appreciate that. And I hope that you actually do what you say you're going to do and start learning this today. You will be one of the very, very, very few who actually do take that step. Very few people actually are motivated to learn this and stick with it. It is a commitment. Make no mistake. It is a commitment. Very few people possess the willpower and the tenacity to stick with it. Most people just want an easy, quick fix. Unfortunately, you know, I mean, if you cut your arm off or something, a Band-Aid ain't going to cut it. A bandage ain't going to cut it. Something more serious has to happen. You have to have more serious work done to it, right? That's kind of like this. Um, There are no quick fixes. There is no really easy road to learning this. There just isn't. It takes dedication, work, commitment, and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And when most people, most people in my six years of experience, when they find out how much concentration it actually takes, They fall off the grid. They're like, meh, thanks, but no thanks. There's got to be an easier way to do this. So there isn't. Some of them come back. Some of them don't. But I rest assured every night that the folks who are meant to learn this will learn it. The folks who aren't, the folks who are the dilettantes who just dance around and, you know, you see them. They've been commenting on this channel for a couple of years, but yet their knowledge level has never increased. They still ask the same questions that beginners ask because in their one to two years of being on this channel, they haven't really learned anything. Why? Because they haven't taken workshops. But everybody, there's no judgment from me on that. Everybody's on their own journey. They learn at their own speed. And folks, just like in all the other live streams, I'm going to take this, hopefully, if I have the time, and edit it into a more cognizable form and publish it to the public. If you want to see the complete unedited version of this live stream, you may go to the members section of this channel, click on the Tier 2 membership, loyalists and contributors, join that tier, and get access to this unedited replay, and watch it as many times as you want. 
And there are literally dozens and dozens of other members only videos in that section as well that the public has never seen. With more personable detailed types of videos in there than they're available to the public. But that's for the membership tier two loyalist contributors. Outside of that, there are 900 or so free videos on here containing the sum total of my correct sentence structure communication parts and syntax knowledge, my gift to you. Thanks for joining me.